When you want to read something, what's the first step that goes into it? Writing it. And writing is pretty cool. Writing is pretty cool. Because writing good important things creates good important books. And those good important books can be listened to as audiobooks on Audible. Today's sponsor. You know about Audible. I know about Audible. It's a fantastic service where you can listen to tons of audiobooks narrated by fantastic narrators. Each and every one of them bringing their own spin and impressive just plethora of voice acting talent to the mix. Audible has been a sponsor of this channel many times, but not only because they're a product that I absolutely adore and I use nearly daily. The reason they keep coming back to sponsor me is because all of you are going out and listening to some of the recommendations I give you. And one, thank you very much. And two, I have a few more. First things first, if we're going 40K world, because we're always going 40K world, I've mentioned it before, but read the Night Lord trilogy, please. I literally made a whole army because I read those books. It's three books. Just start with the first one, Soul Hunter by Aaron Dembski Bowden, it's done by Andrew Wincott. The voice acting is just it's so good. My sons, the galaxy is burning, warring through the centuries as the talons of a murdered god. For non-40K stuff, if you haven't read Misery by Stephen King, I'd really recommend that. The movie is incredible, but the book itself is equally as good. Really well done. And it's a great audiobook to throw on as well. It's got, it's very uncomfortable in all the kind of good ways. And if you want something a little more philosophy, I guess. Sure, I try reading The uh, Myth of Sisyphus by Albert Camus. It's a philosophical book about Sisyphus and how to live your life and absurdism, this and that. I, I use it a lot for my day-to-day -day life. I, I kind of, I really like that book. Anyway, there's some recommendations. Check them out. Look at the description as well. Going to audible.com slash Bricky or text Bricky to 500-500 to go ahead and get started on your audiobook journey immediately. And uh, thank you very much for sponsoring this video, Audible. And let's talk about writing. Hello, everybody. My name is Bricky, currently serving 10 to life in my own home because I had COVID the last week. It, it wasn't very fun, but I'm better now. All's good. I, I feel mostly, well, I, I'm mostly better. The Elden Ring video, though, did very, very well. That was pre-COVID and everything. Glad all of you liked it. I really enjoyed writing that one. I felt like the pacing was a little bit better and I had a lot to say and it was a long video, but I think it did a pretty good job at explaining what I wanted to say. And I even almost kind of changed some of my opinions with some time. So I might make a follow-up video to that one like six months down the line after the game's been out for a while, but we'll determine that some other time. My arm has also been healing up rather well, as you can see. And you know me, I like my I like my hand motions. I like my movements. This battle is is about to explode. Fight! Sonic Kapoor! Sarasso! This is why I'm happy I can do this in the comfort of my own home. But today we are not going to be reviewing a game. Today is more of a concept day. It's more of an idea I had in my mind, something I've wanted to talk about for a while, but no real way to explain it, despite me mentioning it in so many videos prior. This is a video where I want to talk about what happens when a character makes a decision, and not just a normal decision, but a decision that is morally wrong, technically wrong, or against the main fabric of their character. That might seem a little bit weird to explain, but it's basically like, okay, how do you make a character who is generally pretty evil and how do you make it so it works when they do something heroic? Or more in particular for this case, how do you take a character who is generally seen as pretty good and make them do something abhorrent? And how does it work properly? For a long time in prior videos, when I talk about a character and a character making a decision, I'd have to always say, it's not about if you like the decision. It's not about if you agree with what they're doing. It's about, do you believe they would do it? So when it comes to discussing games and particularly reviewing the stories in them, there tends to be a disconnect between the, the right choice and the one the character makes. Now the right choice in quotations there, it depends on a certain set of specifics. And I normally fix these into two different categories, a technically right choice or like a mechanically right choice and then a morally right choice, which already has its own weird set of circumstances because moral relativism. Now a technically right choice is a very simple one. That is when they make the right mechanical or or technical choice in a situation like picking the right ball out of three cups, aiming the gun and handing their shot and doing a really good job at that. Having the guy make the three pointer basketball shot to win the game and the series and all this kind of stuff, you know, it has them do a technically right choice. And often 
item, those are set up in the skill of the person. Or perhaps just, you know, maybe a little bit of luck. 007 can do something crazy like shooting a gas tank to explode and kill a bunch of guys because he's a super secret agent and he thinks on his feet. The person who threw the basketball probably had all this time where they weren't very good at basketball. They kept training and training and training. And then they finally did that big hero moment and they saved the game. You know, it's all been set up like that. But then there's also morally right choices, which is more the lines of like sacrificing oneself to save many people or the drunken father who resists the temptation of alcohol to be with his daughter for her birthday. That kind of morally right choice. Now, I'm a firm believer that for a character to be good, they never need to make the morally or technically right choice ever because perfect people tend to be fucking boring. Superman, I'm, I'm sure he's got other stuff in the comics and stuff, but the Superman I've seen is fucking boring. In fact, there's a lot of superhero type characters that are pretty fucking boring. And this is despite them always doing the right thing. You see someone like uh, Tony Stark, for example, you know, titular Iron Man is a lot more interesting because despite him eventually going and doing the right things, he started off as a fucking war profiteer and arms dealer, which is a pretty heavy subject matter in this day and age. See, Tony Stark was just sundowner the entire time. And instead of capturing children, he eventually got captured himself and then became a force of good. Like the good old days after 9-11. <laughs> However, despite this, I'd say it's one of the reasons why super villains are often the much more interesting characters because they are doing morally wrong things, but there's a reason for it. They either have trauma, revenge, they're crazy, who knows? Good people do the right thing because it's right. Villains do the wrong thing for insert slew of reasons. And that's what creates interesting backstory. That's what makes the superhero villains generally more interesting than the heroes at least to me. Villains who are evil just to be evil are generally really boring unless there's something else going for them, i.e. someone like the Joker, who his entire mysterious persona, not only that, but also the way he acts and his personality is what makes him interesting, despite the fact that he's, you know, just a force of crazy chaos. Hell, Michael Myers is just pure evil, but he's interesting just from his aesthetic alone. So when good people who normally make the right choice, and I'm gonna say good people, not protagonists, because there can be evil protagonists plenty when they end up making something that is the wrong choice or the morally wrong choice when is it acceptable when is it acceptable for someone who is generally good natured to do something wrong and of course wrong can be two things technically which is you know going in the wrong door missing a shot with their gun just just doing something mechanically incorrect or morally wrong like being selfish or thinking for themselves or leaving someone to die now the answer here is obvious when is it acceptable for someone to act out of character and the answer is simply when it's been set up heavily beforehand. There's a movie I enjoy because I'm a sick fuck. It's called Green Room. Green Room is about a young band that gets stuck in the green room by a neo-Nazi group at a neo-Nazi bar they didn't realize they were playing at. It's a pretty grisly film, but it's my perfect example of horror movie characters doing dumb things and it being completely acceptable. Both sides, the band and the skinheads, are completely inept in their own ways. The band is freaking the fuck out right now. They're not thinking straight they are in a whole shitload of problems right now and the skinhead group led by patrick stewart of all people is just completely disorganized and they're having lots of issues within so an inept neo-nazi group and scared shitless band kids are going at each other and they both do stupid stupid things but it works for the context of the story on the flip side there's a movie i really like called event horizon but in event horizon it's all a whole bunch of very well trained space faring people and the first third act of the movie they're pretty dumb they split up a lot don't check in enough they go out and they just they just do very dumb things in the first act it doesn't make sense for the characters because they're so like highly trained people they were here for this main mission to find this ship and they end up acting like morons despite the myriad of examples that things have gone wrong now later on in the movie sam neil starts making dumb decisions but those those work because he's got his own motives and all that stuff but in the beginning it really rubbed me the wrong way the harder thing to discuss is when a character makes a morally wrong decision. And this is the one that takes a lot more to get right. Because in order for you to make a character go completely against their main code, so to speak, it has to be set up pretty heavily beforehand. I find this particularly annoying on the flip side for superhero films, because often I feel like the character didn't really go through either one enough training or two enough of an emotional moral adjustment for them to just stand up and decide, 
I'm gonna fight crime. Hello, my name is Barry Allen. <laughs> in fact, this is actually one of those things that was discussed in the first Guardians of the Galaxy movie when they're talking about why they want to save the galaxy. Because I'm one of the idiots who lives in it! Now, an example of a character in a movie going against their character for something that I thought was really just not set up well and dumb was in the Halloween remake a few years back. There was a doctor character in the Halloween remake that ends up, I think, killing someone about on the end of the second act of the film. And it's supposed to be this big twist. He kills someone so he can understand why Michael Myers does it or something like that and then michael myers just kills him immediately anyway and then she's basically entirely done just to get myers to the Lori strode house and it's really contrived and incredibly stupid and it wasn't set up enough the doctor wasn't set up enough that he was that morbidly curious to make him do something like this on the other side Walter White. I mean, the guy goes through a million mental hoops and they all pull off. He starts off as a good guy doing good things to a good guy doing bad things to a bad guy doing bad things to a bad guy doing some really fucking bad things. And then back to like redemption. It's a whole thing. It's a whole arc. And you believe every second of it because you understand the character and how it's set up. You know why Walter is refusing the money for his chemo treatment because he feels like less of a man by doing so. He always feels like he's just living an uneventful full unenjoyable and an overall uninteresting life and handouts is the last thing he needs right now for his own mental health and well ego and now we can finally get to the part of the video which is the reason why i wanted to make this video in general we can finally stop setting up everything and start yelling this entire video the whole one for me making this video was from one game the last of us the last of us one not two that's a whole thing there last of us two will require like a three hour video for me in multiple playthroughs to truly say what i want to say about that game and i don't have the time for that so the first game joel is a character we know and he is the greatest of guys he ain't even hurt <laughs> I've been on both sides. Oh. Now, it's hard to stick Joel in an alignment chart based on his prior actions, but he kind of bounces around here and there throughout the game. Now, I've beat The Last of Us 1 maybe like 12 times, and that's me lowballing it. It's one of my favorite games of all time. I still think it holds up magically. So a few years back, I actually streamed it. And at the end of the game, I put the entire chat in emote only mode so no one spoil anything and just let it play out because many people had never played it before and they were watching it for their first ever time. If you need a refresher, this is when the fireflies end up taking Ellie and are going to go ahead and do surgery on the cordyceps in her brain, ending up killing her in order to make a vaccine. And Joel takes this pretty well. Where was the operating room? So he goes out and kills about 30 people, maybe more, breaks into the operating room, and then the head surgeon is right there and he says, bro, don't even try. My daughter is fucking jacked and she plays golf. You'll regret this. He ignores this warning, steals Ellie, and then kills their leader. And then he proceeds to lie to Ellie about the entire thing and Ellie cautiously accepts it. Roll credits. This is genuinely one of my favorite endings in video games ever because it's brutal morally difficult to handle abrupt like a lot of the rest of the game and promotes a ton of discussion when i took my chat out of emo only mode there was a slew of opinions many people angry with what joel had decided to do many people thinking that he was terribly in the wrong and how dare he do what he did other people kind of with him on this whole situation there there was lots of gray lots of back and forth yes no maybe etc a lot of discussion with this ending is determined by the question is what Joel did right? Was what he did a good thing or acceptable? A huge basis for this argument is the ineptitude of the Fireflies. Constantly throughout the game, the Fireflies are shown as getting their shit kicked in or being massively disorganized all the time. They are fractured and experienced, bordering on inept as a rebel organization. The military is beating them down. Their science endeavors aren't working. One of their head scientists had cordyceps infected monkeys and got bit by his own monkeys and had to shoot himself rest in peace steve blum and then they literally knock joel out while he is giving cpr to the savior of humanity one of the only if not the only immune people 
in the world. So they take her right after that fact and under 24 hours already plan on operating on her and killing the only immune person in the world without any kinds of tests, observations, or anything in between. See, personally, I don't think this was planned by Naughty Dog. I think it's just kind of a happy accident that they came off as so inept because it more so was just a way to get Joel to do what he did and have kind of a time limit going along with it. But despite this whole thing, the Fireflies appear to be very reckless, disorganized, and inept at their job. So with the prior knowledge in the Fireflies and their poor way of handling Ellie, we can generally infer that what Joel did was actually pretty justified at the end of the day because of, you know, like what was going to happen, right? No, 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 shut the fuck up. No, God fucking damn it. No, it's not. It doesn't fucking matter. The Fireflies mean nothing. The point of their experience means nothing. Their aptitude means jack fucking all because none of it matters to joel it drives me up a wall every time i hear this argument well the fireflies were so dumb well the fireflies does this i don't give a fuck what the fireflies are about because joel didn't give a fuck what the fireflies were about do you think joel for a second gave a literal single fucking shit about the ineptitude of the fireflies he was he was sitting there waiting he was like oh that's really irresponsible of them to be be operating on her so soon. How, how dare they? No, of course not. This is Joel's choice, not mine, not the players. It is his choice. He doesn't give a flying fuck. They could have been the most perfect angel wing humanitarian organization, and he still would have gone to murder spree. It could have been an orphanage of puppies and kittens, and he would have gone around declawing with a fucking M4. If Ellie's operating rule was centered in the Jedi temple, Anakin would look like Gandhi. Joel slaughters this facility. He slaughters a operational medical facility in the post-apocalypse because he wants to save his new daughter. The game has set this up because the game has culminated over an entire year of in-game time, that relationship between him and Ellie, the realization of his dead daughter from pre-apocalypse and then everything going on with him finally accepting her into his life and the trauma they've been through and all of that. Joel has finally accepted his new daughter and finally broken out of that painful shell that he's been living in for so long. And that is why he murders a huge amount of people in an operational medical facility at the end of the world because whether or not you agree with his actions doesn't mean fucking anything joel may not have always been a good person he generally wasn't but he was becoming a good person he was letting that hard shell break down and trying to become a better person thanks to ellie and so by the end of the game he's tough and ruthless but he is better and is allowed to make such a horrifying decision and then lie about it because it was so excellently set up. Oh my God, you have no idea how cathartic it is to finally say this kind of thing. I keep hearing this every single time. It's like, well, Bricky, what are you, what are with the fireflies? They were so, I, I don't fucking care. No one should fucking care about how the fireflies are because Joel would have done it no matter what because he wanted to save his daughter and murdering 30 plus people was more important to him than losing another kid. And I might not be a father, but I'm curious exactly how many fathers out there will be able to make such an easy choice or see it as an easy choice. I don't think what he did was good at all. I think it was a horrifying loss of life and just like a terrifying murder spree, but I believe he'd do it. I understand why he did it. That's what makes the ending so good because it's hard to handle because it's hard to think about because it ends so abruptly and crazy and it makes you think like, oh my God, what have I just done? But I believe he'd do it. Let your characters do terrible things. Let your characters be terrible people. Let the player or viewer question their mentality. Spec Ops, the line is an incredible game where I didn't want to do almost a single thing I did in that game. The entire game from start to finish, I was thinking to myself, is this really the right decision? Are we, are you kill Americans in that game for goddamn nearly the entire thing. To many of you, especially those of you who do any kind of writing, I'm sure this is like, writing 101 but but 
something that I really need to talk about and say because it was driving me up a wall and I can finally point to a video that I made and say, hey, it doesn't matter if you agree with them because I believe they would do it because it is in character and it makes sense. And it's really hard to write characters like that. I can completely see the difficulty of being able to properly set up something like that for such a long period of time and really get that payoff when it actually happens and that moral ambiguity. And it is probably so difficult, which is why it's so rare when it actually happens. And it's so rare when it's done so well. And it's the reason why The Last of Us won, despite the second game, me not being a huge fan of, it holds up excellently on its own. I feel better. I feel good. God damn it. Thank you for watching this video. That's it for me. I'm gonna go start making videos on new games and things. Thanks to the patrons and the and the, the members of the channel. You're all wonderful. Uh, questions. Dude, why these fucking questions? Uh, do you also smell toast? What's a toast? What's smelling? Can you smell what the rock is cooking? Is the one who smelt it the one who dealt it? Do you already know the smell of the game? Did you lose the game? And then this is just loss. I fucked this. Uh, I'm gonna play Uncharted for my next video. I'll see you then. <coughs> Come on. Obviously, you're a skater.